well, I've decided um, that even though I don't feel well, I thought today, obviously, no makeup, not even done my hair, or attempted to do something with my hair. And sometimes I think we, we, it's sure, we forget that um, if, when you've been ill, if uh, you do a little bit too much and you put too much out, when you're not 100% yourself, you can end up overdoing it, which um, I have done. And I've been really busy, not just for the last two weeks doing this, just loads of other stuff. I've been changing bank accounts, I've had a few different things going on. And um, even though I've been really happy and I'm loving all the videos, and when I'm feeling better today, I'm gonna to do today. But what I just wanted to say was, that, um, what I'm about to do now, I'm not fit enough, not well enough at the moment to, to, to do a lesson and just do some proper yoga. It will be in a few hours, um, but at the moment I feel pretty, pretty dreadful. So um, I'm going to put on one of my own lessons. I'm going to lie on the sofa and I'm going to listen to it, watch it and listen to it. When I was in India and we were training, Gandhar, who is amazing, he was saying that when your body isn't okay, then you shouldn't be doing stuff when the body's not ready for something. But you can still watch, you can still listen, you can still imagine. Now I remember from when I was a teacher, um, learning about how children read, because I was a primary school teacher for 23 years, and I did a, a lot of um, extra things um, about reading and teaching children how to read. And basically, what happens with the brain when you're reading is, the brain can't tell the difference between you imagining something's going on and you doing something just to do with the brain. So um, when you read about something or you know when you're watching a film and you're watching something happen and you, you cry because of it, um, it's because the brain is sit sitting itself in to the mind of the person that you're watching or you're re reading about basically. So you empathise with them. If they're drowning, you are in there, the water drowning with them, and um, because you're imagining it. So, so the brain literally, if you pretend to make a cup of coffee, the brain doesn't know the difference between you pretending to do it and you actually doing it. So if you close your eyes and you imagine that you're doing something, you're still technically speaking doing it. So when it comes to yoga, it's a little bit the same as, as um, what I learned about when I was reading, when I was teaching children how to read. You lie down and you listen to my voice in the lessons or somebody else's voice if you if you prefer somebody else um, or you just watch a video and even the chanting the one I've done with the Reiki um, sorry the, um, the chakra one the sounds you don't have to roll out your mat and get on it if you're not well enough lie down lie on the sofa Close your eyes and just use your imagination. Because yoga means to join, yoga means to unite. Yoga means to join the mind, the body, the spirit, the emotions, soul, whatever it is you want to call it. And it is all coming together. You don't need to be physically in that pose on your mat. You can close your eyes, you can imagine it. You're still doing yoga. So forget everything that Western society tells us that you have to be hammering yourself on your yoga mat. When your body isn't up to it, don't do it. Give your body a rest, like I am doing right now. Chill. And if you fancy doing something, put on a lesson, put on something. Headspace app, brilliant for meditation. If you've got that, if you've got a smartphone, you don't have to listen to me. Find something, listen to it, or watch it, okay? You're still doing yoga.